All right, so we're looking at Tony Thompson here. I mean, Tony Thompson, disco legend, best known for his work with Chic, obviously Nile Rodgers, being a main songwriter, producer, and that very, very, uh, you know, unique guitar style. You, you hear it and you're just like, yeah, that's Nile Rodgers. And of course, the incredible, like some of the funkiest bass lines ever, um, ever recorded coming out of Bernard Edwards. So just a powerhouse like trio there with the, the kind of rhythm section. Love it. So I want to break down some of uh, the best known and, and some of the favorite Tony Thompson grooves. So we're going to look at Le Freak. Got to look at Le Freak. Classic disco uh, groove there. We're going to look at um, I Want Your Love as well because it's got a nice, some nice accents used on the hi-hat, which, you know, like we, we have a lot of the same beats in disco. But what I like here is what I'm trying to break down is some of the little nuances that make each each groove slightly unique, slightly different. And hopefully you can kind of think like, you don't have to reinvent the wheel for every song you re you record, but can you just bring a little twist to make it sound different? So we're gonna look at that. And we're gonna look at good times. Obviously, you know, some very sample bass line, um, well known well-known track and I want to look particularly at the the little baseline breakdown of that as well because we're going to look at again the little nuance Tony Thompson puts in there to make it interesting get ready it's going to be quite funky and it's going to be very disco let's do it all right so hopefully I have the sheet music now and we're going to look at La Freak by the way if you haven't got the sheet music grab it it's um it's in the link below this video or the last video I've forgotten where I'm going to put it, but it's here. So go and grab it. Um, and we're going to look first at Le Freak. Now, hopefully you know that tune. How could you not know that tune? Um, what I've done here is I've broken down the intro and the chorus, because it's essentially two grooves, intro and the chorus and the verse. Okay. Um, now, it is at 120 BPM. A lot of disco is around that kind of speed. And looking down the sheet, you can see we've got 120, 115 and 110. And when we're playing a lot of 16th notes on a hi-hat, which we are, it's, um, you know, it's quite busy. It gets you working. I want you to learn this slowly, right? So we, we're going to break down what, what, what he's doing here. So what I want to do first of all is just a hand pattern. Now, when, you, when you're playing the 16 beat, if you don't know already, you're playing right, left, right, left, right, left. So it's a single straight roll, always alternating your hands. And then when you come to the snare drum, you're bringing your right hand down onto the snare. And then remember, after that, go back to a left hand on the hi-hat. So it's always right, left, right, left. A lot of drummers I see, they do the right hand snare, then right hand back on the hi-hat. That's wrong. It's right hand snare, then left. Always right, left, right, left. And then what we got here is an opening of the hi-hat on the one and and the three and. So we go... Here's your hi hats. One e and a, uh, two e and a, uh, uh, three e and a, uh, four e and a. Uh. Now, a little little thing to point out. You can see here it opens on the and, but the plus sign is where we close it. That doesn't close until beat two. So as you hit the snare, you close the hi hat as well. Now, when you're learning this slow, you're really going to hear the openings. You'll you'll because you'll hit it twice. You'll hit it on the and with the right hand, then you'll hit it on the a uh, with the left hand. So you're going to hear two openings. And that's going to sound weird. It'll be like tss, 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 tss. But what you tend to find is as you speed it up, it kind of blends into one. And I and I would hit that, that left hand softer anyway. I wouldn't catch it as a full opening. So it's still kind of playing it, but you're not catching it in the same way as you are with the right hand. You want the, the opening on the and, one E and with the right hand, and the R doesn't open it. it you don't, don't catch the open sound as much. But as it speeds up, you'll find that you only really hear it as opening on the on the and. You don't really hear the ass so much. And it just feels more natural to then close it on beat two with the snare. Okay, I just want to point out, because as you play it slow, you'll really hear the two openings if you're not careful. Check it out slowly on the drum kit. All right, so now hopefully you're happy with that hand pattern. So what we need to do now is add the bass drum. So in this intro, it, it, it also happens in the chorus, but in the intro, it starts off quite 
quite sparsely with the bass drum. So you can see you've got a little pickup bass drum on the end before bar one properly starts. But let's just ignore that for a second. So you've got a bass drum on beat one, locking in with that right hand on the hi-hat. And then nothing for the rest of that bar, and nothing for the second bar, right up until the end on the four and. And so as it then loops around, you get this and one. So you get like one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and one. That's that's that bass line. Boom boom dun 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 boom boom You know, so like when you hear the song, you'll hear what I mean. And the pickup starts with the four and there. So when I'll, I'll play it on the kit now, and you, you'll hear like there'll be a count here when you play this song. So you go one, two, three, four, boom, boom. So you start on the and one, two, three, four, and one. Okay, so I'm, go I'm gonna go slow now. Let's try the whole bar with the bass drums. All right, and now we're gonna move down to the verse. The verse is essentially, it's, it's the same beat, but now we've added a bass drum in uh, on beat three, which is where you'd normally feel it. So if you took bar one of the intro, like the first full bar, it's basically, it's that, but we're gonna just play one bass drum in on beat three. So you're like one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three. And then when he opens on the end of one, one E, that's it. I can beatbox it a little bit, but let's do it on the drums. Okay, so now we arrive at I Want Your Love um, from 1978. So we are, um, you know, th this isn't too dissimilar from The Freak and most other disco. And in fact, if we think about the verse groove in The Freak that we just did, essentially it's that. But what we're going to do is we're going to remove the open hi-hats, no open hi-hats at all. And instead, what we're going to do is add a couple of accents. So you can see at the end of beat two on the ah, uh, and the beginning of beat three, right on three, you've got a little arrow, that means we accent, right? So we're gonna play, um, we're gonna play just the hands first of all with those accents. And what I do with the accents is, so if you're playing your, your normal note on, on the top of the hi-hat, what I would do is then just drop my wrist slightly and use the shoulder of the drumstick on the edge of the hi-hat to create that accent. So I'm not, I'm not particularly going to, to hit the hi-hat harder to get the accent. I'm actually going for a bit of a sonic change by just making a thicker sound using using the shoulder stick. So most of your notes in disco, we want them to be clean. So we're using the tip of the drumstick on top of the hi-hat. And then for these accents, we're gonna use the, the edge down, the shoulder of the drumstick on the edge of the hi-hat. Creates a bit of a thick sound. You could even like release your foot off the pedal just slightly, so there's a bit of a you know, not a full open sizzle, but just a little bit of a thicker sound from, from that as well. Um, and, and that creates some interestness. So the sound we'll hear is one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. So have a listen to just the hands. Okay, so once you're comfortable with that hand pattern, we can add the feet. Now get comfortable with the hand pattern. That really is the key to this rhythm with the accents, right? So take your time with that stage. Once you're comfortable, we're gonna add the bass drum. So you've got one on beat one, 
and one on beat three. And, and notice that one on beat three locks in with that second accent that you did. So it'll lock in, you'll go left hand on the out of two, and then on three accent with the right hand, locking in with the bass, all right? So this is easy as long as you've got the hand pattern feeling pretty good first. Check it out. All right, and then I just quickly want to, to get you to look at the verse groove, which is written under the intro. It's the same, it's the same. And you can see there, so I've written out verse groove, um, first bar repeated times 15. So it's a 16 bar section, very standard, you know, multiples of four, 16 bars is four lots of four. Um, so the first 15, it's just the same groove as the intro, but then it's that last one, bar 16. Can you see we've got a cheeky, open hi-hat on the very last note, on the 40 and ah, uh, which means right, left, right, left. You're gonna, you're gonna hit that open hi-hat with the left hand. This sounds so cool in disco, just slightly more syncopated. Often our open hi-hats on the and, one e and a, two e and a. If you put it on the ah, uh, one e and ah, uh, it's just a bit more syncopated, and just gives it that cool little lift. It's a, it's, a really, it's a really cool effect. And that is, in effect, that's his feel that leads us into the chorus. So disco isn't, generally isn't about your big drum fills and showing off. This is about the groove, getting people to dance. So there's not some massive drum fill here, it's just a tsk, 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 tsk. just a little open hi-hat to give it that change and then into the chorus. Really cool, very subtle, get it clean, get it accurate and it'll sound great. All right, and now we arrive at good times. Oh, man, this is just the, just the bass line. So we're, we're actually gonna look at the bass line break here, which on the first time I was listening to is three minutes and 13 seconds. I mean, this is a pretty long song when you listen to that extended version. So it's, this is when it all breaks down. So that bit in particular. So for most of the song, it's pretty just a standard groove, it's all good. But what I like here is we're gonna look at, there's two, there's two parts to this really. Um, and I wanna look at the hands first. So, so what you can see, I've written four bars out. This is the first four bars of that break. But you know, if, you, if you're grooving this sort of thing, you can just throw these little bits in wherever you want. So first let's look at the hands. Standard 16 beat. At the end, we're gonna do that open hi-hat on the ah. Now we just did that at the end of I Want Your Love, didn't we? That, that 40 and ah, and it's with your left hand you would hit that. You already know that. Before though, in, in I Want Your Love, we did those two accents, here, no accents. It's just straight all the way through, and then the nice little open hi-hat on the ah. Let's just try that. All right, so if you're, if you're cool with that, I wanna now look at the bass drum pattern. So this, this the bass drum pattern here is, cause, so the bass line goes, do do boom, 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 boom. So what, what the bass drum's doing here, as far as I can tell, is locking in with that, do do boom, boom, boom. You know, really hitting those down beats, locking in with the bass guitar. So one, two, three, four, do 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 boom. So that, that's a key thing here to really lock in with that. So let's look at, we'll just look at bar one there. Um, it actually repeats that bass drum pattern on bar three as well, but doesn't do the open hi-hat. So the key thing is it's a two bar phrase. It's did a boom, boom, boom. So you've got the three bass drums in a row and in bar two, it just, goes back to doing the bass drums on beat one and three. And then bar three does the boom, boom, boom again. And then bar four, just the bass drums on one and three. So 
in effect, there's two bars here to learn. But the reason I've written four is because he does an open hi-hat on bar one and an open hi-hat on bar four. So, you know, the little nuances, little variations you can throw in there. Anyway, let's just um, slowly check out bar one with those bass drums in it and the little open hi-hat at the end. All right, cool. So, you know, we, we've seen some of the, the same stuff here in this Tony Thompson lesson, and that's that's fine, you know, because, I mean, we will see some of the same stuff. That's just, that's the way it goes. And what's, what's really cool is just to, um, as I said, just understand those little nuances Every song, so if you're recording a disco song or a rock song or funk, whatever, you don't have to reinvent the genre. Quite often there's, there's conventions, these things work for a reason. So what we're often looking for is how can we make it interesting? Is there a little subtle, a nuance, a little shift, a little twist, some way of bringing our own personality into this? It, so that doesn't mean playing a whole new beat. And we can see that with Tony here. It's pretty much, he's learnt one beat. I'm sure he knows a lot more, but he, for, for the examples we're looking at, he's kind of learnt one beat. But then he's found different ways by altering the bass drum pattern, by changing the hi-hat accents, by changing his placement of the open hi-hats. He's creating iconic grooves that still make people dance 40, 50 years on. So that's really a key point to get, as well as getting the grooves down and, and gradually bringing them up to speed. And by the way, accuracy is so important here. These have got to be clean, they've got to be, be precise. Um, or, you know, it just doesn't work. Um, I remember listening to some of the grooves that J.R. Robinson plays on Off The Wall on Michael Jackson's solo album. And it's just, and J.R. particularly, it's just his precision that really got me. And to this day, I still work on trying to get that precision that he got. I don't know how old he was when he recorded those, but um, probably quite a young guy in his maybe early 20s, I'm not sure. But he just nailed it with the precision. So it's so important for this genre. Um, and that's what I want you to work on. What I'm going to do now is just play um, all four bars there together. I think this only happens to once, you know, so when it goes on to the next four bars of that break, he doesn't do, it's not like he consistently does the open hi-hat on the out of bar one and bar four of the sequence. He does it the first time, and then you can take that and add it in, just like a little bit of flavour you're sprinkling in as and when you feel it. Um, sometimes, you know, you might want to chuck a couple of those accents in from I Want Your Love. So when you're just grooving, you can throw use the hi-hat to be an expressive instrument, to throw those little nuances in and just create something cool. So, Tony Thompson, legend, go and listen to Chic. You know your day's gonna be better if you do it. And let's check out the whole of that, that break now. <laughs> 